Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Olson. You are three lessons away from being done with Algebra 2 this year. Congratulations, you're almost there. I like this lesson, uh, arithmetic sequences is what we're gonna be doing. Um, I think it's kind of fun because you can do it with figures and drawings as well. Um, it just makes it a little more interesting, but let's go ahead and get into this. Um, some of this is a little bit of review with what Mr. Arias did, but it's going to be a little more concrete on how to get a rule when you have a sequence that is arithmetic. And I'll explain a little bit what arithmetic means, but here we go. I'm going to do an example that's going to kind of carry us through the lesson on the first page, and then I'll get into the specifics on the second page, exactly how to write a rule for an arithmetic sequence. Okay. Here we go. How many are in each diagram? Draw diagram four if the pattern were to continue. So let's see, I might be able to cheat a little bit here and copy this and paste it over here. And so let's see what is going to change. It looks like we are adding a square to each side, adding another one. So I need to add a square to this side and add a square to this side. All right. Describe the pattern. I would say that we are adding two squares to each um, diagram before, right? To the diagram before, adding two squares to the diagram before or to the picture. All right. Now, if the power to continue, write the sequence with the first five terms. So what's my sequence? Well, how many squares do I have in the first one? I do have, um, sorry, that's the first term in the sequence. We have three squares here, five squares, seven. And then when I added these two, that would be nine. So if I was to write those as a sequence, we'd start with a three, three, five, seven, nine. And then the next one, it looks like it'd be 11. Again, adding two each time. All right, so we have our sequence and we're gonna represent this in two different ways. We're gonna do a table and then we're also gonna do a graph. Now N is going to represent the term in the sequence. So this is the first term that we had. It was came from diagram one. This is the second term, third term. So N is where in the sequence it is, first, second, or third. So we're gonna start with a one and we're gonna just go all the way to five here. The first term, the first diagram had three squares, then five, then seven, nine. And we're gonna assume that the fifth one following the pattern would have 11 squares. All right, so we're gonna um, take that and put that on a graph. I'm gonna label my independent axis, the horizontal axis N. So this is the diagram number or the term number of the sequence. And this will be F of N for my Y axis. And I want to use a consistent um, scale here. If I go by ones, that's fine. If I go by twos, that's fine. Um, but I'm just gonna go by ones on this axis. And I could go by twos on the next one because I do wanna get up to 11 but that's not that much farther above. So I'm actually just gonna go by ones, one, two, three, and so on. All right, so I'm gonna plot these points. For the first term, we had three squares. And for the second term, we had five squares. Third term, seven. Fourth term, nine. And for the fifth term, 11, so that would be about there. Okay, so what I want us to notice is that this is a linear graph, okay? Um, now, let's just put in here in parentheses for a second, y equals mx plus b. We're familiar with linear equations and how to write those. We need a slope and we need a y-intercept. Now here I don't have a y-intercept, um, but following the pattern, if I was to subtract two from that first term, that would take me to one right there, if there was a y-intercept. So I am gonna show you that as well when we do the rules. It's not traditional to use it in the y equals mx plus b, but I'm gonna show that to you later. Okay, so I am gonna to get to that point where I show you how to get a rule 
let's first talk about some notation. So we've already talked about n, n as being um, the term in the sequence, not the value of the term, but like where in the sequence. Is it the first, second, third, fourth term? So the term in the sequence. So we'll write that down. I have a feeling I'm gonna to want to write more than what there is room for. Um, now, n minus one, we haven't seen that, but we're gonna see that a little bit. And sometimes refer to that, we refer to that as the term before. Um, here, we're kind of kind of think of n as n minus one as being um, the one before it or um, one less than that, one less than n one less than n. F of n is the value of that term in the sequence, the value of the, specifically the nth term, right? So whatever you plug in for n, you're finding the value of that term, the third term, the fifth term, and so on. F of one would be the value of the first term. So F of one is kind of unique, we're gonna use it a lot, but that is the value of the first term. Knowing what the first term in the sequence is, is very helpful. And D we have not talked about yet, but D is called the common difference. Oops, let's spell common correctly. The common difference. And we saw that in this example that we had a common difference of two. We were adding two squares each time. And so between the terms in the sequence, their values were changing by two. It was a common difference each time, okay? Um, you could finish writing this up and say it's a common difference between terms. Um, and this is in an arithmetic sequence, which I'll define in a bit. between terms in an arithmetic sequence. That word is kind of funny looking. It looks like arithmetic, right? So there is a different way to say that, arithmetic. Um, but when we're talking about these sequences, we call them arithmetic. Yeah, I don't know why, it's just the way it is. All right, so let's write a rule. So we're gonna take this example that we did and we're gonna write a rule for it. So what I'm gonna do is go back to our table and see if I can find a pattern that helps me find a future term. So for example, let's say I wanted to find the sixth term. I know that I could add two, but let's see if we can figure out a way so that I don't, that I don't have to use the previous term to get there. So again, we notice that we are adding two each time. And I'm just gonna put that here for now because this is actually gonna kind of help me figure out a general rule, okay? What's also important to note here, and it's kind of assumed that this is also going up by the constant amount of one, right? So as long as the term number is going up by one, then this number here, which is gonna be our constant difference, our common difference, um, we can look at that. Now, let's say I'm trying to get that sixth term. I'm trying to find the value of it. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rewrite some of this in a weird way. So the second term here of five, we got that by taking three and we added two, right? Okay, seven, we got by taking three and adding two, two times. Now, instead of writing plus two plus two, I'm gonna write plus two times two because the shorthand of writing a, a lot of addition is to do multiplication. Now to get nine, I took that original three and added two, how many times now? We added it once, twice, three times. Now to get 11, we took three and added two, four times. Again, let's do that. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's definitely a pattern. I'm taking my original number and then I'm adding this amount, which is a common difference, and then I'm adding it this many times. This number, if you look at to where we are in the sequence, it's one less than where we are. So for the fifth term, we added that difference four times. 
let's go up to three. For the third term, I added the difference twice. So let's say I didn't know anything else and I'm trying to find the sixth term. If I'm following the pattern, I'm gonna take three and add two five times. One less, one less than which term I'm on, okay? And that would be three plus 10, which would be 13. And sure enough, right, we got that without actually adding two to the previous term. So this is good because if I want the hundredth term in the sequence, I don't want to know the 99th to then add that difference, which would mean I need to know the 98th and 97th and 96th, right? I wanna be able to find the hundredth term without having to find all the ones before it. Okay, so our rule for this, based on that information, we're gonna say f of n. So let, this is gonna allow me to find the hundredth term or 1,000th term. What we did is we took the first term, which is three, and we kept adding two. And the number of times that we would add two was always one less than the term that we were on. In other words, n, minus one times. So we took the number three, which is our first term. We added the difference this many times, always one less than which term in the sequence. So that's our rule. That's it. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. Now let's do a little bit of math here. Let's do a little simplifying. What if I was to distribute that two? That would be two n minus two. Okay, so I'm distributing the two and I'm gonna simplify this. And then that is going to be, um, actually, whoops, three minus two is one. So one plus two n. Now, let's take note of what we've got here. And let's go back to our graph. So our graph up here, if I was to look at these points and come up with the y equals mx plus b for this, notice that my slope is two. I'm going up two for every one, up two for every one, rise over run, two over one. My slope is two. And my y-intercept, if I was to have one here, would be a one. So notice that when I simplified this, I got the slope-intercept form, two n plus one. So you've done this, it's just we're doing it in a slightly different way. What's good about this formula here is that it, you just plug in the numbers and you're done and you can just leave it. So let's generalize everything we just did. Um, arithmetic sequences in general is a list of numbers with a common difference. Okay, so a list of numbers. So it's got a pattern, right? a list of numbers with a common difference. And we call that common difference D, okay? Now this might be a number that's being added every time or maybe it's a negative number. And so when you add the negative number, it's actually going down. So you're adding something or subtracting something. And that common difference we said is a constant. It's always the same value that you're adding or subtracting. So it's a constant that's being added, or if it was negative, right? You're actually kind of subtracting a value, subtracted, to find the next term in the sequence. Okay. All right, let's generalize how to find that arithmetic sequence rule. So to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, it can be found by using the formula where f of one means your first term in the sequence and d is the common, oops, I keep forgetting to do the second m, common difference. So we're gonna write it like this. To find any term in the sequence, the nth term, you need to know what the first term is. 
and what the common difference is, and you're going to add it n minus 1 times. So again, think about our last example. We knew that the first number was 3 and that we were adding 2, and we had to add 2 one less times than which term we were looking for. So you're going to want to put this you know, on your paper with a star or with some highlight, right? So you're gonna wanna memorize that. And then we kind of talked about how this is, you could make this look like y equals mx plus b. Um, the way that you get that b value, that y-intercept is to go backwards in the sequence. So back here, this is my first term. I don't have a zero term, right? I have a first, second, third, fourth, fifth. But to get that, I would go backwards. If I'm always adding two, go back one, I would subtract two, I'd get a one. Now we don't have a zero term, but that's what the y-intercept would be. So there is another way, like I said, that you could think about this as far as slope being your common difference and then what would be like a zero term, your y-intercept. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple different examples. Some of them I'll save for you and I'll just do a different video to finish that up. We got six here, I'll probably do three or four. Let's see, for one through three, we're gonna find, um, if it is an arithmetic sequence, um, we're gonna find the rule and then find the 20th term. So I wanna determine for sure that it's arithmetic. So I'm gonna check and see what the difference is. So it looks like we're adding four here and we're adding four and we're adding four. So looks like this is arithmetic and that our difference is four. We also know what the first term is because it's written there as negative five. So we're gonna just plug this into our rule and then we're done and then we can find the 20th term. So our general rule for this sequence, you're gonna take the first term f of one, which was negative five, and we're adding a positive four n minus one times. So that's our rule. See how quick that was? It really wasn't that hard. Just gotta plug it in. Then you wanna find the 20th term, which means you're gonna plug in 20 for n. So let's see, that'd be four times 19. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit and look at my notes. That's equal to um, 71. So it was negative five plus 76. All right. Okay, so number two and number three are similar to that. I'm gonna go ahead and let you do that. Going back to that idea of slope intercept form, if we were going to write our function that way, um, let me move this down a little bit because I think my video might be in the way. Um, we would want to know what the slope is. The slope, the common difference is still four. So it'd be four N. And then your y-intercept, again, think backwards, like what would be the term before here? If I'm always adding four, going backwards, I'd subtract four. That would be a negative nine. So minus nine, so that's another way. And I have found that um, my, some of my students like that way better. So just presenting that to you. Number four, I'm gonna skip down to number four. So the directions for number four here say, given the two terms in an arithmetic sequence, determine the rule. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple ways of doing number four, and then I'll also do number six with you and then I'll finish up the other ones on a different video. So for number four, I have the first term and the third term. So think of it like this, here's three, don't know what that next term is, and I know that the third term is negative seven. So I've got the first term, but I don't have the difference, right? So the first term is three. The difference, I don't know. So that's what I need to find. So there's a couple ways to think about this. So I've gone, I've added whatever difference is that D or subtracted, it could be a negative D. Um, 
it's happened twice, right? It was added once to get this term and then added again to get that term. So I've taken the number three and I have added the difference twice or 2D to get to negative seven. So I've created an equation where I can solve for D. I'm gonna subtract three from both sides to give me a negative 10 and then I'll divide by two and that gives me negative five. So my difference is negative five. So let's, let's double check that. If I subtract five, I'd have a negative two. And if I subtract five again, I'd have a negative seven. So this is correct. That's our difference. So now I have the first term, I have the difference and I can plug that in and I've got my rule. Another way of doing this is to kind of like average this out, try to figure out that difference in a different way. So um, if I wanna find an average, I wanna know the difference between the first and the last. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do negative seven minus three and figure out how much has it changed. So minus a negative seven minus three over how many terms it took to do that difference. Um, and it was two terms and, or I could do three minus one and that'll tell me how many terms I've done. Oops, two minus one. So this will be negative 10 over two, which would be negative five, which is the same answer we got over here, right? So there's two different ways of doing this. You can do it this way or you can set it up like this to find the difference. And I'll show you both of those ways a second time with number six here. So six is presented a little bit differently. Um, we're, we kind of just need to assume that this is our first term here. The first term is 12. And then looks like one, two, three, four, five. Um, we've added the difference five times to get to the sixth term. First term, second term, third, fourth, fifth, the sixth term. Okay, so f of six is equal to negative three. So I'll show you the first way again. If I started with 12, I've added d how many times? Now, if I was at the first term to the sixth term, that means I've added D five times, so plus five D to get to negative three. So we started at 12 and we've added five of these values of D. I don't know what D is, but some amount D has been added five times to get to negative three, right? One, two, three, four, five. If there's a difference between one and six is five. So I can solve Subtract the 12, that'll give me negative 15. Divide by the five, that will be negative three. So the difference here is negative three. Or another way to set this up is say that is to average these out. So what is the difference from here to here? Okay, the difference between those two values spread out over the six terms here. So a total of five different times that we did D. So to find the difference between negative 12 and negative three, I subtract negative three minus 12. And we were at the sixth term minus the first term. So this would be negative 15 over five or negative three. So we got the same thing. So now we can do our rule. I just realized I didn't finish up that other problem. So our rule is to take the first term and we are adding a negative three, or I could say subtracting three and minus one times. So I didn't finish this one up here. The first term was three and we're subtracting five and minus one times. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna do the other problems um, in a different video, just uh, so you don't have to watch both, but I would try the others and then if you want, check out the other video.